Today in this video, we're going to compare HSL wheels of Silky Peaks Double Pro Studio Pro, Affinity 4O and DX04 F4. We're going to find out the similarities, the differences, how they function, if any of them better than the others. Those who are not familiar with what is HSL, H stands for hue, S stands for saturation, and L stands for luminance or lightness of the color. Very important tool and very effective tool if you want to control saturation, lightness of specific color of a photograph. If you are also looking for a video tutorial of how to use HSL wheel, this video is probably also for you. So without any further ado, let's jump in. So I've got a photograph open in Affinity Photo, as you can see, and HSL is already open. Also, I've got the same photograph in Silky Pixel Zebra Pro Studio Pro and DxO Photo Lab. And this is how it looks like in DxO Photo Lab, the HSL slider, HSL wheel. I'm going to start with Affinity Photo. In Affinity Photo, you have a wheel like that and each dots represent each color channel. So this one, it controls the global channel of the photograph. Let me show you how. So you can completely change the hue of each color. Look at that. So this is a global change or you can also do that. I'm gonna reset, change the global saturation. You can also change the luminosity of the global thing. So you can completely make it dark or make it completely bright. Pretty straightforward. You can also select, for example, red. Imagine that you already know where to change and change the hue of the red to completely something else. You can also control the area of the red. Let's say you don't wanna go that far. You want to just stay in to inside the red and red only, strictly red. And if you do so, now it's only touching anything within the range. You can even make it as controlled as possible to make sure that nothing else is touched, only touches red here and red in the hat. Let's, let's try it again. Check this out. So this is what happens. And same goes for yellow, green, aqua, blue, and magenta. Pretty straightforward. It also changed the saturation like that, you can see the saturation is changing in the green channel and same goes to luminosity. So you can do global, you can do individual channel, you can do individually. You can also use the picker. For instance, let's say you don't know where exactly to select. So you can click picker and click on a color. It should automatically change to a range. And now you can, of course, do your micro adjustment of the yellow zone. And you can clearly see in the visually that yellow is also affecting a little bit on the red and a little bit on the green. Again, you can control it, push it in as much as you can to make sure that it stays within the zone, doesn't touch anything on the green area and on the red area. Really easy. Of course, you also have, so you can have, you have the blend modes. You also have the opacity to make sure that it, um, it can control the extent of your change. You can merge it, delete, you can save it as a preset if you like. So as you can see, that's how you work with HSL wheel in Affinity Photo. Now, we are moving on to Silky Peaks Developer Studio Pro. Does it do exactly the same thing? So similarity, you have a hue, saturation and lightness. Right now, you, one thing you do not have though, is a color pickle. So it cannot really click somewhere and then change it here. However, don't you worry, when you move your cursor, pay good attention, there is a change. There's a dot moving on. I'm gonna put my cursor on green. You can see that you have a dot in this area. So which means, yes, you don't have a color picker, but you know exactly where to change. So you can do that, click there, like that, and then, change the saturation clearly see the change or you can go upward and make it as bright as possible of course you can do the same thing you can change the hue and you can also change the lightness of the red interesting interestingly speaking though you don't have kind of like a range like you have it here which is personally i like it you know why because it makes my job so much easy. I don't have to worry about if, if I'm changing saturation of red, is, is it affecting anything in the nearby zone? For instance, here by default, when I reset it, and let's say I want to change 
red again it's selecting a little bit further on the yellow zone and on the pink magenta zone i don't want that only thing i want to change is red and red only that's it now we have to fine tune it it works sometime but here though you know exactly where to change either you can move the white dots like that you can see the change and you can pay attention to the sliders they're moving too and it's not really affecting the yellow and green or magenta it's only affecting what i want to change period so that's why i kind of like this one better than affinity photo so i do as much as i can here and then i do the rest in affinity photo if i have to do local adjustment because in local adjustment in silky Beach developer studio pro is not like extraordinary manageable but not the same however i like it so that's how silky Peak developer studio control the hsl wheel what they call as fine color controller you can also select each swatches like that in dxo photo lab or affinity you have these dots color dots instead of color dots you have swatches here and that's the difference between so it's basically essentially the same thing you just have strictly minimum option that just work and you can click the reset button you have a plus button here when you make a change you can save it as a preset now so that means we established that affinity photo hsl wheel silky Beach developer hsl wheel they're essentially about 99.99 percent .99 same it just they both have different kind of design that's it it just look different and does the same job in dxo photo lab again you have pretty much 99% same as affinity photo check this out it's almost identical yeah it is identical almost except you have a picker right in the middle and you have the wheel so you don't have a hue slider instead of hue slider you have this wheel that change globally check this out if you move it around slowly you can see the change of hue of each color is changing which is pretty much the same as when you click the this one and try to move try to move the sliders it does the same the dot each color dot does the same thing too pretty much you can click the red and it will control the red zone so let's try and see if it's happening yep so it's controlling all the red good news it's more uniformed than affinity photo in affinity photo when you select red it's selecting quite a bit of a range outside red zone it's going all the way to the yellow or to the pink where in dxo is staying almost within the red zone not going way too far only way it can go too far if you want to otherwise no same way here you are the one is in control in charge um it won't touch anything else so you have the similarity of saturation you have a similarity of the luminance fair enough they're all same we got the idea they all control hue saturation and luminance one thing different is uniformity what it does now if i move it i have got red selected if i move it there are no change at all so you're probably wondering then what it does so we have the explanation here if you click the question mark you have the color color channels hue saturation luminance and you have the uniformity so uniformity allows you to equalize shade variation within the selected color range bracket note that you cannot apply uniformity settings to the master channel so that's the master channel all these dot color dot and these are the master channel what you can do means that you can select the inside dot move it around let's say i wanna i just want to go a little bit further to the to the blue so instead of going that way i decided to select the bottom and then use that and as i'm moving pay attention to the color that is changing too okay i'm gonna move it Take a look it's changing right cool now what i'm going to do i'm going to change the saturation completely down 
what is doing is took away all the saturation of red pink to the blue because that's how far I have selected would have done the same job if I go back that way and then pull the top one instead would have done the same job let's try it again you see the difference is when you try with the bottom one you can affect the uniformity so what again uniformity does I'm just gonna show you and you get the idea or you will get the idea so I'm gonna go all the way to the right when I'm going all the way to the hundred all the red and around the red heading towards this color as you can see the magenta so all the red turn into magenta and if I go all the way to the left or minus hundred it's heading towards a bit of red and yellow so I think you got the idea already if you're not I'm gonna try another way so I'm gonna head back to the red and just pull the top ones like that and just a slight touch change what's gonna happen if I do the same thing minus 100 the red is turning into a kind of shade of a yellow and if I go further plus 100 it's heading to this direction so it's staying within where the bottom dot is if I do that again this is in the yellow between the yellow and red zone and this is between the pink zone if I'm going back and forth now minus 100 it's there this is the shade plus 100 you have a shade of pink it's almost like a fade now big question so that's a significant amount of control but why do I need that I have no idea because at the end of the day you are the artist you may need it you may not there are many other ways to do exactly the same thing. So DxO PhotoLab provide you that tool, uniformity. It's kind of give you the control of fading to different color from main color. Is it really important? Truly, I don't think so. Is it useful? Of course, when you need something, if you have it, it's always useful. But the, um, this is not one of the most important tool in the world that it can actually have this effect any other way you prefer in affinity photo or even silky piece developer studio pro point is that you have that access tool in the exo photo lab and you can use it if you think it's important to you so the final question is is hsl wheel in dxo in affinity photo and silky peaks developer studio pro are same in principle they're all exactly the same they all have one job to do control and change hue saturation and lightness or luminosity of a color or multiple colors in affinity photo you have the same benefit of photoshop which is you can multiple you can use hsl wheel as many time as you prefer in multiple area in silky Peaks developer studio pro and DxO for lab is a raw converter with a massive tool, but it's not, it doesn't have the layer option. So of course you're stuck with using only once or maybe a few time using the local adjustment option in DxO and and partial color control tool here. So you can do that, but you all have the same tool in all those three softwares, and they all do one thing. They change hue, saturation, and luminosity of color channels. And they're not better than the others. They all are useful. I hope this video is very useful to you. And if you have any suggestions, please let me know. Happy to help. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.